Hey, what up? It's your boy Metaphysics. You watching Ear Ground. Respect my man Plot. We bubbling hot. Are you ready? Ear Ground Radio. We came, we saw, we kicked it. New voices amplified. Greetings. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Plot Mark and welcome to Ear Ground. New voices amplified. And today I happen to have a legend on the program. I'm speaking to a guy who is part of the foundation of the hip-hop movement in Zimbabwe. Uh, he doesn't need much of an introduction, as most of you already know him. Metaphysics, greetings. What's up, what's up, what's I'm up, good, man? Zilise. Ah, boy, I'm not guaranteed to go on to my work, to my interviews. I'm not going to go on to my interviews. Face to face in a Germany. In Germany. Ah, that's cool. I'm going to go on to my visit. Thanks a lot. It's, it's nice to be in your hood. And Welcome. Yeah, this is my second time in your city. And thanks true a lot that, for, true that. for hospitality. So, yeah, um, just to start off, uh, I would like to know a bit about your childhood, like Mchikura, Marain, before. And Nagajarwa, Kumbare, Edith Opperman. Oh, okay. 1973, wow. Kambuzuma, well, actually Westwood. Okay. Uh, that time there was still segregation and it was still Rhodesia. Yeah. So I had to go to a mixed race school because my father was German. So mm -hmm. I went to a mixed race uh, nursery school in Acadia, uh -huh. then moved to Maybrain, and I've lived pretty much my whole life in Mebaz. Wow. Uh, so you could say I'm a product of urban. Harare, yes, urban yes. Rhodesia at the time, yeah. Wow. And growing up as a mixed kid in a predominantly black community, how was it like? It helped me firstly with the language and being able to uh, understand uh, uh, Shona culture or yes. the people from from the grassroots level. Yes. Why I am Harare, it gives me ease of access because. Mm -hmm. Classic example, I miss one of my purisa, and then you, you know what I mean? I never far out, ah, we do it, do. So I always surprise people, firstly, with just how in depth my, my, my foot, my, my, my roots are in terms of growing up Nevan. I see, I was, ne I was never really separated from growing up with, with the people. Okay. So it's Great. an advantage, wow. definitely. Great. And what are some of your fond memories of your childhood? Oh, I grew up when, when things were amazing, man. I, I remember when milkmen used to deliver milk to the house and, and you, you, had, you could choose between a gold top and a silver top. And I remember, I think the silver top had less cream. The gold top had more cream. I grew up in a, in a time, even though there was segregation and we weren't allowed access to mm. a lot of things. Uh, growing up uh, during those times uh, was, was, was pretty cool. I remember a, a functioning bus system mm -hmm. where you could actually ring a bell at your stop sign. I remember cycle tracks. I remember yeah. bus stops, bus stations. Mm -hmm. I remember a functioning Zimbabwe, you know what I mean? And, and um, also just access because at the time we still had that colonial rule, just, you know, being educated with that very proper, strict British education. Those, those are things that later on in life would become very valuable assets. So I, I have a lot of fond memories growing up in Sosberi Arare. Uh, quite interesting. <laughs> and your musical journey, what was your first initiation into music? What are, what are the kind of music or songs that we're listening to? Artists? I grew up in a musical family. Our mom always had her records playing Diana Ross at the parties. Okay. Uh, dad came from Germany, so he had his traditional German records and he had an organ that he'd play on weekends. So I grew up with musical instruments around the house. Um, but for me personally, it was just my, once we moved to Mabel Rain yeah. and there was this whole movement of middle class African people who were now moving into the hood. When I first moved into Mabel Rain, there was only white people. There was only two black kids at the time, Masimba. Uh, uh, Nyemba and I can't remember who the second one was and over the years more and more um, middle class African families moved in and they brought in uh, 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 some would be coming back from London some from the States they came with the music they came with the break dancing they yeah, came with sure. the sneaker culture basketball culture 
so just being in the neighborhood as as it was transitioning into into a Zimbabwe, there was just so much access to 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 just guys coming from all over with their musical influences. There was no way of escaping it. where everybody was about music and dance somehow. That's quite interesting because you're talking there about um, the early you know years when hip hop was starting to come through to Zimbabwe. Yeah, I mean, you have you have to think that hip hop already started in the 80s. So it as we were going into independence, hip hop was already existing, of course. But go ahead, sorry to cut you short. Uh, no, it's fine. I was saying um, there was also the reggae movement. Reggae used to was also a big thing then mm -hmm. from the Bob Marley uh, independence to a lot of the reggae bands that came through the years and also different artists that started doing renditions of reggae music. But you got deep into hip hop. Uh, do you remember the first verse that you spit? Oh yeah, yeah, I still spit it today. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the reggae, say my youth, tango wanna reggae, say my my dad, you know what I mean? And just turns my my robot because we used to do the robotic dances and electronic music was now yes. coming in. Our version of reggae, yeah, in the DJ. Digi. Because it was digital. Yeah. So I'm from the digital generation when digital started uh, uh, influencing uh, uh, everything, you know, from the music to how we dressed. We all looked robotic. We all. Yeah. So for me, the first time to actually pick up a, a, a pen, I was taught how to write raps by Terry Mahati, aka oh. Terry Guns, Terry aka Guns. Kunta Kinte. Wow. Uh, he was my mentor. Before that, I was always just interested in the breakdancing aspect. And when I first saw somebody rapping live with my own two eyes, it was Terry Mahati, who's uh, about to turn 50. Wow. Respect the Don Gorgon. Um, so, Kunta Kint is the one with clothing line. The clothing Kunta. line, Kunta, okay. the Harari Hustler t-shirts. Harari Hustlers. Okay. Yeah, man, he's influenced uh, uh, fashion and, and, and how kids nowadays go That's out to amazing. innovate and print their own shirts and stuff. He's, he's the forefather of that. Wow. And also one of the godfathers of Zim Hip Hop, you know what I mean? And I was just lucky that he grew up in the hood and accepted me and, and you know, he was an older kid and taught me the tricks of the trade, how to rap, how to write, and really honed, helped me hone into my skills. So my first rap was, people take Africa as a poor land, the jungles that we live in and the food we demand. They come to Africa to see us swinging on vines, not to a tempo, rocking to dope rhymes. In movies they show us as cannibals that we not, as we dance around fires, putting people in pots. But it's not like that, face reality. Africa is nice with the basic simplicity, something like that. So. Quite interesting. I mean, just from the lyrics, I'm getting an impression that you're reading a lot of material that brought uh, some level of consciousness. Hip hop was very conscious at the time as well. Like when we fully got in, immersed into the movement, there was groups like Tribe Called Quest. Yes. There was the Native Tongue Movement. There was this whole movement of um, like Boogie Down Productions, rappers identifying themselves with Africa, and yet the African story hadn't been told. So we were trying to tell them, you know, people take Africa as a poor land, but it's not like that. We're also doing what you guys are doing. So we were just, you know, exchanging with the information that was coming from New York at the time or wherever it was. Yeah. Wow. So there had to be an element of consciousness. Right. But there was no space for hip hop uh, in terms of registrations, uh, in terms of uh, the recording studios that were there then. Was there? There were no recording studios. I mean, there was uh, uh, Grammar. Grammar records, but there you needed to have a record deal with Grammar. They they were more traditional, uh, traditionally oriented uh, live musicians bands. Yeah. Then there was a little studio in town called Siana Sounds that was owned by Stuart Cato. I think he was Jamaican, okay. Okay. and he would let anyone record if you had your ten dollars per wow. hour, wow. <laughs> and that was for us where we recorded our first demo. Um, uh, Isaac Chirwa actually played our keyboards on our first demo. Uh, the Hitman had his own show uh, called Raptivity Jam. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, I think, either on a Friday or a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a one-hour show that did highlight hip-hop. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time he just took our cassette, played it, no questions asked. One wow. of the few DJs to do that. Um, you know, they say the other day Peter Johns passed away. Everybody was yeah. like, rest in peace, mm -hmm. PJ. Yeah. But for me, PJ was a very selfish DJ who never... 
you know, what's his legacy? What did he do to help a youth, you know, in, in that sense? Like, uh, he never played local. He never played local. He never, they, unless he was making money, he never really supported anybody. If you went to his parties and asked for the mic, he'd never give it. So you have this, this, this duality of, of people like uh, PJ, and then you have real DJs for me, people like Hosea Singen, the, the hitman, who didn't even think twice to to uh, play our music and ha has helped me create, uh, uh, gave me enough confidence to make a living out of it. So, you know what I mean? It's it's also the DJs at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to your question, there was very few platforms that allowed hip hop music and such. Oh. Great, and I, I watched your documentary, you were talking about um, how you got the name uh, Piece of Ebony. And right. There was Ebony Shake. There was Piece of Ebony. How how did you guys meet uh, before the name came into being? Um, I met uh, Tony Chihota at Kosa College. Oh, uh, Kosa. Yeah, at Kosa. Ah, okay. We had failed our O levels miserably, so we had to go and repeat. <laughs> and I met Tony. By then, I had I was already established uh, as an MC with. Uh, Terry Mahati, Kunta Kinte, we already had a group called Lethal Language at the time. Uh, Lethal Language had already been signed to an American label. Uh, we had already done demos, we had already been on radio. So I was confident as, as, as a musician that, okay, anything that I would do from that point on would turn into something. So when I met Tony, it just made perfect sense because we were going to the same college. Let's try, try out a project. Then we met Chiwoniso Maraire when she was still very young, coming back from Seattle yeah, at the yeah. time. Uh, and Keith Farkasen, who yes. was recording an album at the time that never, that he didn't get to finish. So he allowed us to take over on that project. And that became Piece of Ebony. But already by then, I had so much confidence in music production, in recording because of Terry Mahati, because of Lethal Language. Wow. So for me, Piece of Ebony was just a side project. It was, yeah. it was just there to complement Lethal Language, which is where my, my original foundation is. Interesting, you mentioned Lethal Language uh, as the first pro project that you did, mm. uh, and that you had already got signed to a US label. How were you? There was no internet. There was no social media. No, there wasn't. And and this is something that I've managed to to carry for many many years. Terry Mahati used to go weekly, if not daily, to the Maple Rain Post Office and send letters. That's wow. where I learned the value of being able to write a proper letter. I mean, you guys do it for your proposals yes, in the business. If you if you can't write a proper letter, whether digitally or or manually you're not gonna open doors. And Terry was a magnificent networker in terms of pen pals, in terms of buying magazines, always looking for the address, writing to it, to the address in New York and saying, this is who we are. Wow. It wow. just, till today, it, it's, it's miraculous, just the power of communication. And I learned that from an early age, watching Terry mm -hmm. send off these let letters and two weeks later his pen pals would be sending us shirts, wow. records, magazines. We used to get magazines from the States, from London, from Japan, just on the basis of how good he, you wow. know, so. It's quite interesting. Yeah, man, it's, it's educational, man. Because I find it quite fascinating that uh, right now a lot of things seem a bit easier because of internet, but then to start to think of an era when there was no internet, when there was no social media, and how you could even get access to an address, how you could even contact somebody yeah, and, yeah, 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 and yeah. start writing to them and ultimately do a business. And you were the first uh, hip hop project from Zimbabwe, and you made it uh, on, on, on national TV. Uh, you made it uh, on, radio. on radio, and you guys, did you anticipate this, considering that Zimbabwe was predominantly playing? No, we didn't do it. We, we, we didn't do it with any anticipation of reward. We did it because it was just the cultural movement at the time. It was it was what was hip at the time. It was just you know like uh, my my son's right here skating around. Mm -hmm. It's the thing to do right now. They're skating, and one of these kids one day is going to be a skate champion. 
it's not that he picked up a skate and skateboard and said, I want to do this to be a champion. It's just because he's grown up with the thing. That's what's happening. That's what the other kids are doing. And out of that, there's going to be a champion who's going to be like, oh, this is something I want to do for the rest of my life. You know, and for us, it was the same with the music. We were just part of a bigger movement. There was break dancers coming from Bulawayo. There was uh, uh, rappers already rapping in Shona. There was uh, so, so you much. Didn't start now. No, you start no, 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 no. Oh, that thing. It started. It started when hip hop started. You know what I mean? The, uh, my Zimbabweans are You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like Tamuka says, <laughs> So it's 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 easy that and the influence. Guy, I'm going to go to London. I'm going to in the US. My Zoka for holidays with that influence. So, tango kura najo. So it was an urban grooves that really. Kwangu zina jana urban grooves. Urban grooves are so later. Urban grooves is is when um. Zim artists started to find their own identity and put their own identity into it. Before that, we used to emulate the principles of the culture. We tried to sound as American as possible. We tried to do everything as a, to fit into the program. But later on, when Zimbabweans realized that they got their own audience, yeah. Urban Groove started to, 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 to become a, an identity of this its own thing, you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's not, they didn't even call it hip hop, they called it urban grooves because it was a very, very hybrid, specific thing to Zimbabwe. I hated urban grooves, by the way. I hated, <laughs> I hated that whole movement. Now, now, until now or then? Well, one of the main producers, there's this documentary going around uh, with, with Rocky and they're talking yes. about the Chavundu, Chavundu. Chamembe project. Yeah. Before that album was recorded, I went to visit the guy who who was putting everything together and I had my and I was still young I had my microphone mm -hmm. that <laughs> had been stolen from ZBC <laughs> I can say it now because it's like many years <laughs> later one of my homies <laughs> stole two mics from ZBC <laughs> like AKGs expensive ones so I got one and the other one went somewhere else so I went to this Chamembe studios there and I was showing off my mic and he said, let me borrow it. And I never saw it again. So, so because of that, I hated Urban Grooves. I still want my mic, by the way. And I'm sure ZBC is still looking for their mics also. So because of that, I hated the movement because I thought, hmm, record on the mic. Wow. But, um, now, now, looking at the time that you decided to call your group um, Peace of Ebony, I remember you mentioned that you had passed through Ebony Hair Salon. Exactly, exactly. Uh, can, can you just give us maybe a snippet into exactly what happened? Because I started reflecting like, oh, I knew Ebony Salon, and how did... Yeah, that was such an iconic saloon, man. That, that's, that's like a my rose, you yeah, know? That's like rose. like Red Rose. It's one of those things that every time when we came back from school, why yeah. food apart is ending, Ebony was, I don't, I don't, till today, I don't know today, Annie, or what was being done. I don't even know if it's still there. I hope it is. I think it's still there. It might have changed hands. So definitely. the thing about Ebony Saloon is it was right opposite the bus terminus for Ashdown Park. Oh. So then go, 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 uh, and ebony. The, and then the piece? Uh, so, okay, we can't just call it Ebony. <laughs> so me, I, li I liked uh, 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 De La Soul and they had, they had peace signs on their LP cover and when I said, ah, we've got to incorporate the peace, peace sign. Oh, so okay. how do we put the piece of Ebony? Ah, yeah, that's the name. Oh, wow. And then it became a positive existence allowing cultural expression of Ebony. I gave peace an acronym just to make it a little bit more contextual to what we were doing, but uh, resented. Yeah. That's where the name came up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I mean, it, 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 it has remained, I mean, a very profound name because when you just think of it, it's remained, I mean, a very profound name because when you just read it, it's, it speaks depth. It's not like a random name. Um, but what would you say was the biggest highlight of your musical career with Peace of Ebony? Oh, um, definitely getting signed to a label in South Africa, uh, getting noticed by Island Records in Jamaica, 
um, our music video videos being one of the first groups to actually have a physical CD in Zimbabwe when all the other groups were still doing vinyl or cassette. We were one of the first to have a digital format. Um, the, the, the whole thing, because for me, that was my introduction to understanding how a functioning studio works. And Keith was a very hands-on producer who would also allow you to, to ask questions to so I learned a lot about how to set up a studio so for me it was it was the foundation for everything that would become metaphysics till now it was the wow. it, it I found my 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 culture in a piece of ebony wow. so to say yeah great thank you so much yeah, stay tuned we're coming back and we're back we're gonna be talking about um, the aftermath from piece of ebony the next uh, chapter and then the current project that he's working on, and also a bit about uh, Sunil Manaheim and a lot more of the project that he have done. Fantastic. Stay tuned, Eagle, New Voices Amplified. Boom. New Voices Amplified. Eagle. Welcome back, New Voices Amplified. Eagle is the place, and today we're not speaking to a new voice, but we're speaking to a legendary voice, um, speaking here to Mera Physics the founder or a founding a pioneer for the hip hop mu music movement in Zimbabwe Word. and uh, we're talking about a uh, piece of ebony and there was also ebony shake I think they were from South Africa ah okay it was not no it had nothing to do with us ah, okay. I, I remember there being an ebony something yeah. but totally different genre didn't affect us in any way I've heard of them as well but I don't know who they are great great there's a music video, I'm trying to remember the name, but it, it, it was a huge, huge uh, success that we used to watch on Sounds on Saturday and mm -hmm. Music Box, Yuichi Oniso and... Uh, I think it was Vuka. Vuka Naganeni, yo. Yes. I never can say, I don't know, <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah, that was shot by Pam Devereaux Harris from South Africa. Uh, it was the first time we shot a video on film, real 35 millimeter film. The crew came from South Africa. Wow. Uh, I learned so much on being on that set that I ended up going to study film with that same production company yeah, yeah. and became a filmmaker because of that video wow. and, uh, and started doing my own music videos for Atha Vuvuzela in, in, in all his artists in South Africa. Uh, I got my own television show, Shell Road to Fame, prime time in South oh, Africa. Oh, you on Road to Fame? I was the, one of the first, I think, uh, Rebecca Malope, or I can't remember who was before me. Yeah. And then I hosted it for like three years. Wow. And that opened my doors to the Johannesburg scene, where we established hip hop again in South Africa, working with the groups out there, uh, Prophets of the City, um, the Lee Club movement that later on became the Johannesburg J section hip hop movement that is till today, you know, and, and I think a, a large influence of what South African hip hop is, is also because this piece of ebony group from Zimbabwe came to South Africa. So that video that you're asking about created a whole movement within itself as well you know and, and and for me as well as a filmmaker quite interesting that you you bring in the south african perspective um I, i've been part of conversations where the relationship between south african and zimbabwean hip-hop artists in terms of um the the the, the birth of hip-hop in south africa is concerned how was the scene like in south africa by the time that you moved to south africa uh, when I moved to South Africa, it reminded me of the 80s in Zimbabwe. Don't forget they had been under a uh, uh, cultural and apartheid uh, regime that didn't allow them the same privileges and access that we already had in Zimbabwe. So by the time we moved there as teenagers, the gates were starting to open up for them. So they were discovering this new movement that we already had been part of. Uh, not to say that we brought hip hop to, to South Africa, no, it was there, there was prophets of the city, there was groups already there, but the urban side of hip hop, this New York type of feel with the videos and all of that, they were slowly opening up to that and I think we were highly influential or at least we were part of that process. Um, 
if you look back or look forward actually yeah. like uh, BET Awards Shasha, yeah, Shasha the influence of another Zim chick I saw I saw her interview she's from Mutari mm -hmm. you know what I mean it's just that thing she happens to be there and she's happening to to help their movement grow and one day in history she'll have the same conversation how what was your role in South African music I think it's just really a question of being at the right place at the right time and that was pretty much it you know that's wow. that's 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 it's just destiny things happen that way somehow wow great and um she only so continued music as a solo artist and w you continued uh to 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 work on your films and also music and Kunta Kinte, did he continue making music as well? No, that's that, that's what I always want to talk to him about is like why he stopped. He was so good, he was fantastic, but he decided to pursue fashion when he created the Kunta Kinte brand. And that, that's been his passion ever since, uh, well, till now, and he's still doing it. Uh, Chiwoniso, rest in peace. I totally get it. You know, after I got the job in South Africa mm -hmm. and I had to spend more time in South Africa working for television, the other the other members couldn't wait, you know, like every time Meta comes back. Yeah. So yeah. their career started to move on as well. And she met Andy Brown mm -hmm. and um, she was always a more sophisticated artist in terms of her uh, repertoire and her ability to play from urban music to traditional music. And I think she also wanted to explore that side of her 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 talent and i think andy was the perfect foundation for her musically but not personally you know what i mean because obviously history will will, will tell the story um tony chihota is still in zimbabwe he was uh, 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 the chief he was the other member uh leguan shaki who later yes. became a later member he's here in germany uh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty much wow. that saga, I suppose. You mentioned uh, Chuaniso, who was a member of the group, and may I saw rest in peace? Yeah, definitely. Um, what do you remember her for the most? Oh, she was my best friend. Me, me and Chi were like brother and sister. Mm -hmm. We were so close uh, and just so free around each other. Like, and I, I uh, that's family. You know what I mean? And Till today, I have great relationships with the Maraire family. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those soul destiny things. I was speaking with uh, um, uh, Dumisani Dres, Dres yeah. just recently. We, for the first time, connected this year. Uh -huh. And it's just a perfect connection, the same kind of vibes I felt with mm -hmm. Chi. Uh, I just remember her for being this sweet, beautiful young girl that was just part of my family. You know, my mom always enjoyed her company in fact all our moms you know i come from i come from a circle of friends who are still friends till today and some of us have passed away like vic fox uh some of us are still alive and we're still just one big happy family wow. great and uh, after i left Johannesburg, uh, is that the time when you moved to germany um, no, I came back to Zimbabwe. I worked in Zimbabwe for a while. I did a feature film with a director called Oli Maruma. Oh, he, with Oli Maruma. With Oli. Oli okay. gave me quite a lot of money for my role. I had the lead role along with Miss Zimbabwe, Karen Staley. Wh which, which film was it? It was called The Big Time. It never got finished. The oh. reels are still sitting with uh, Adam Chigorimbo. Or oh, what's his really? name? Mr. Chigorimbo. Mr. Chigorimbo, yes. Yeah, he still has the, the, the raw footage. At one oh. time, I tried to buy it off him to finish the film, but... Oh. Zimbabweans always want the top dollar, <laughs> which yeah, I didn't first. have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no disrespect to him. I mean, they invested in the film, mm -hmm. but just for you know, just to finish Ollie's legacy, I've always wanted to finish that wow. that film, and that money afforded me then a ticket to go to New York, which was always my wow, dream. Great. I got kicked out of South Africa because uh, I was making music videos illegally. I wasn't part of the film union. Mm -hmm. So Tokyo, who's now a minister, kicked mm -hmm. me out. So my only Tokyo other... Tokyo well. Yeah. Oh, he, he was part of the... He was part of the film union at the time. Oh, wow. So... And so you, you could not work... I couldn't work in film anymore. In they gave me twenty. The they gave me 48 hours to leave South Africa, pretty much. Because what happened was... Uh, I started breaking the monopoly of videos that were made because I was doing videos at half the price and I was doing <laughs> videos the way 
the guys wanted to see themselves. They had more of a hip-hop edge, whereas the people who were doing them traditionally always wanted to dress people up in traditional Zulu outfits, shoot them at a hut somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So all of a sudden, there's all these new videos popping up on television, like, this didn't come from us. Who's doing this? Wow. So I was tapping into people's money. I was, wow. you know what I mean? So they had to get rid of me. So they're like, fi find a loophole. Let's get it Get, get, get yeah. And at the same time, I got kicked out. Titch got kicked out of South Africa yeah, as yeah. well. Titch Mataz. Mataz yeah. uh, and I came back to Zim and it just felt, you know, I'd been swimming in the big ocean in Johannesburg to come back to the little pond yeah, of Harare. I was like, mm, New York, handy. So... <laughs> I upped wow. my skills a little bit more at video promotions in Harare. I worked for Willie Memper, rest in peace. Ah, okay. And then from there, went to New York and started working for the MTV Corporation, networking with the real hip hop movement. And that's where Met Metaphysics was born. Man, you, you've got an amazing story. <laughs> like, but one thing that's fascinating for me is how you remain grounded. You're still down to earth. You still ground. go to Zimbabwe. Yeah, you're still ear ground. <laughs> you're, you're still down to earth. You still go to Zimbabwe, do a lot of initiatives there. Um, what, what keeps you grounded? I, in Jamaica, they have a saying, uh, the humble calf sips the most milk. You know what I mean? I, I've, I've learned that don't, oh, don't, 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 be too, don't be too hyper about it anything if you want longevity yeah. just stay <laughs> humble because this this thing changes there's uh, music is a mission not a competition and and you can never you can never champion it you can never own it you'll you'll be on top one day at the bottom the yeah, next right. but if people remember you for who you are you'll never fall i can never fall from being me yeah. whether i stop being a musician or whatever my my You're what really what keeps me principled and grounded no one can ever take that away yeah, from me so I've, I've never allowed the hype to to affect me I've never oh. you know like the the other day I met um, okay maybe he's got a bit of a mental problem but I was in Zim uh, what's this dancehall artist fire uh, uh, not Ja Prazer. I like Ja Prazer a lot the other one um, soldier love oh, for soldier example love, yes. hey dude let's take a picture this dude was acting like like he's platinum or something <laughs> Even me, I got surprised. Am I doing something wrong? Maybe I should also act like... I was confused. Did you recognize me? It's not even about that because but, it's, it's about yeah. somebody appreciates you and wants a picture with you because he never knows what my platform is. I know. Be know. humble, you know what I mean? And the funny thing is I'd put up posters of him on my car. There was an event happening at uh, well, one of the places yeah. and I'd put poster. I went in two. The, why should I keep putting my poster on your on my car and advertise you? You can't even say hello. You can't even say hello. You know what I mean? And and, and, and it's the, it's those things. No disrespect to you, homie. I know you're a hype man. You know what I mean? I know you you know you you feed off that hype and but look at you in the long run. You know what I mean? It, life has humbled you now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So always stay humble because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, this this thing is a long journey, man. It's a long yeah. journey. But 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 do you feel the the new generation of artists right now in Zimbabwe has the kind of drive that you guys had then? I think they're more driven. Oh, we 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 had to compete with the opportunity of actually being able to get a job. When I was doing music, mm -hmm. your parents would be looking at you saying, but I was that bastard because there was jobs at yeah, that time. Yeah, yeah. Now there's no jobs. So These have kids have no it. options but to unify, which is what I love, how dance hall unified, how to build, like I, I, I commented on, on you, how to build a brand from nothing Van like Van Choga. Mm -hmm. uh, and What's your take on you? I love him. I love him. I, you know, it, it's, it's this whole new school hype of getting attention like Java. Yeah, using using this hand to get attention to achieve this on this side mm -hmm. they and and Venchoga has managed to do you know i saw his interview and he's sober mm -hmm. he's a sober kid he knows how to turn on the energy turn it off when necessary and uh he's aware of what his mission is and he's created his brand mm -hmm. and he's influencing other kids on how to create brands okay it might be an extremist way of doing it dancing in the mud and yeah, yeah. doing somersaults mujecha whatever he does but he's got our attention and he's going to grow and 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 i love that uh the new generation of artists take their art very seriously because it's do or die 
right now. These, these kids are networking, they got managers, they, the, the art is improving, the videos are improving. Yeah, yeah. When, when I see what Amara does in terms of her videos, or when I see, uh, um, what's this young lady, her father's the DJ, um, uh, Tammy, 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 what she does visually, yeah. or what Blacks does visually, or, or, or we work with Angel Arts, mm -hmm. do visually with the limited resources they have. Imagine if they had the, the resources, and, and I love, I love this new generation. They actually inspire me. Wow, that's quite encouraging to hear from you, um, because a lot of the times we, we're sort of uh, hitting them hard and saying you're failing this, you're failing that, but. I think looking from that perspective, you realize they're actually doing more, especially they're the doing more. current conditions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I, I just came back from Zim, like I was telling you, mm -hmm. February, March, now January, February, yeah. And, and what's, what's, what's your perception about the state of affairs? Now? I, I hate it. I hate it. I don't think any, any civilization needs to live under such hardships or deserves to be uh, uh, subjugated, especially in, the, in, in this century, 2020, and we... You know, and, and this is the point I wanted to make. I went and I, I, I bought so much studio equipment over the years that's in Zimbabwe. This time around, I didn't even bring it out because there was no electricity. You know what I mean? So imagine these kids who are making these videos and this music in an environment where... And, and I, I think it's sad that it's a sad state of affairs for whatever reason it is, whatever excuses we have. I, I, you know, like I, I said... In a, in a previous interview, I was always told by my mom to stay out of politics. I'm not a politician, yeah, yeah. but I'm, I'm a humanitarian. And I, and I think some of the conditions that we live in are extreme. We don't have electricity, clean drinking water, access to, to, to hospitals, medication. Just what, why, why, what did we deserve that? You know, how, what kind of nation deserves? Nobody deserves that. And, and we are very smart people. We are very, very... When you speak with any Zimbabwean around the world, they can tell smart you people. anything about everything. And yet we can't get our act together. It's, it's sad. It's, 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 it's despondent. I used to love flying my Zim flag uh, everywhere I go, but at the moment I'm ashamed. I'm, a, I'm ashamed that we're letting ourselves down. You know what I mean? And it's, it's not the government. It's, not, it's us, the people. We are letting ourselves down. You know what I mean? And where do, where do we go from here? Do you see hope? Well, I mean, you, we just have to look at history. Nothing stays the same. But it, it's a shame that it's going to take an extreme situation to change our uh, uh, narrative or our paradigm and not ourselves and not our intelligence. Yeah, yeah. Of course, things will change. Rome will fall. Uh, ancient Egypt doesn't exist. Uh, we had Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe. That whole civilization is gone. It's you know, it was once a great civilization, yeah. and we will also one day be turned to dust. But I don't want that to be the reason of change. I want the reason of change to be our intelligence, our ability to think ahead, our ability. We're all over the world now to, to come together, put our resources together, and not think about the individual, not think about just ourselves and how we can jimirida the next man you know what i mean and and we were talking about kuda and begotten, on, son, and, begotten yeah. son and these innovators who i respect these are Super these, these are these are also family members kuda's mom was my first uh, uh, teacher to give me a bible i went to oh, school really? miss musasiwa taught wow. me so that's also family so when i see people like kuda i'm like these are the guys that we need to be backing these these, these are the guys we need to be emulating these are the guys we need to 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 be supporting for the greater good of the, 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 and you know, not bringing each other down and this, I don't know what it is, man. It's, it's sad. Quite sad. Um, and now you're part of the Sun Mannheim. How did you get to be part of the band? Sons of Mannheim is Sons a German Mannheim. band, multi-platinum. It's been going for 25 years. I've been a member for 20. Uh, we've released five or six albums. In fact, more. Yeah. We've. Uh, excuse me, uh, had uh, multiple platinum, uh, multi-platinum band. We've played arenas, we've played stadiums, we've played some of the biggest festivals in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Uh, I came from New York. I couldn't secure my green card while I was working at MTV Corporation. Yeah. I was on my way back to Zimbabwe. Uh, I had a, a connecting flight from here, from Germany, and I thought, while I'm here, let me, because my connecting flight was in the evening, I arrived in the morning, let me at least see if I can go and see a little bit of Germany. So I went to the immigration officer and I said, 
is it possible for me to just go outside for an hour or two? And he said, let me see your passport. And he's like, yeah, we can arrange something for you. And I went out and the first thing I saw was graffiti. I met a young girl. She had a, a, a hip hop magazine. Okay. And I was like, Great. Mm, maybe this is the place to stay. Mm -hmm. So I phoned a guy I met in Zimbabwe, Eno Kremza. I said, hey, I'm at the airport. I don't think I'm ready to go back to Zimbabwe. Can I come and stay at your place? So he organized everything for me, allowed me to stay at his apartment. Right across from his house was a record shop called Groove Attack, which is also one of the biggest uh, hip hop distributors at the moment in Germany for German hip hop. Wow. I went to visit, you know, I woke up excited. I went to this shop. I met Giorgio who was working in the shop. He said, where are you from? Uh, I said, New York, because I was literally yeah, coming yeah, from New yeah. York <laughs> at the time. He said, oh, New York, are you a rapper? I said, yes, I am. He said, oh, friends of mine got a studio. They're looking for a guy who can rap in English. The first two weeks that I was in Germany, I had my first record. Wow. I had management. Oh. I got my first advance. Awesome. Uh, I got put onto this Cerner Mannheims project. Yeah. And 21, 22 years later, I'm still awesome. still, still rocking with, with the Cerner Mannheim, Sons of Mannheim. Wow. Yeah, in a nutshell, it's. Uh, I could tell. I could write books about about mm -hmm. my adventure. You know, I'm just trying yeah. to condense everything. True, true. <laughs> and you know, looking at all the achievements that you've made and all the success stories, the highs and the lows, uh, do you feel appreciated? Were appreciated by the music and arts community in Zimbabwe? Yes, I I, I can't complain. I think uh, I'm 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 recognized. Uh, by a certain generation, the new the new generation have no idea mm -hmm. who I am, and I don't want them to know who I am because I want them to focus on themselves. I want I want new leaders and new inspirations to come out of the situation. But for me, as uh, at my age and what I'm doing, I'm so happy with my achievements. I'm so happy with the the recognition I get amongst my peers. Uh, the respect I get from certain members in the industry, I'm I'm content. I'm a, I'm a very content man. I've, I've I've achieved more than I would have ever dreamt of in my life. When I look at that, sometimes when I go back to Zimbabwe and I sit in that little bedroom where it all started, I just cry sometimes because like, how how did we manage to get out of this situation? You know, just the power of the passion of of wanting to be part of something so much can actually change your life and uh, i'm content man I'm, i feel i feel recognized and even if it's not by the masses the few people that like you hey, I'm Dara Meta. new voices amplified Eground. welcome back to your new voices amplified i'm speaking to Mira physics uh hip-hop legend and Looking at the Zimbabwe music scene now, I know you've spoken about uh, the strides that the youngsters are making to really push the music. Mm. Um, what would you say to them if you had a chance to speak to a group of young artists, be they dance or hip hop, you know, in space? What sort of words would you pass on to them? Well, every time I go home, you have to remember that I'm working with young artists. I'm getting inspired by them and I'm also inspiring them. So I'm a man of few words in that sense. I would rather go and work with the youngsters and we exchange knowledge that way. Because to preach something has no benefit. To say, hey, Afana, that's just talking. Yeah. That's just theory. But to say, hey, Afana, got a song, got to shoot a video, but a camera. That's, that's more my style. So like every time I go, then I'm always working with the, with, with the young artists there. And right now, one of my favorite producers is Fun F. Oh, Fun F, oh, dope. Yeah, dope. man, and uh, Fun produced a couple of bangers for me. Uh, his partner at the time did my music videos. Uh, Yolanda, Yolanda from the uh, NJO. Ah, Fun okay. NJO, y Yolanda from, from, from the hood. She's a great singer. You know, I, I, I tune in with young energy. Uh, when I'm Nati O, we want to do yes. stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm connected. What, what's, what's your take on Nati O? I like him. I like him. I think, uh, I think he's a fantastic artist. I like his music before I met him. When I finally met him, I was like, the boy's intelligent. He's a smart kid. 
we only exchanged a, a couple of words but the boys got brains you know and, and and that's what i like like i said earlier in this interview that we're a very intelligent society true and like fun f kind of university and you know what i mean saka atinakupusa in that sense and 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 i just like guys who use their intelligence you know in what whatever way just to 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 get by and make a living yeah oh great and talking about your music <coughs> corona tangufa <coughs> <coughs> Talking about your music, what are you currently working on? Um, what can we be expecting from you? Um, right now, Sons of Mannheim, we're working on a couple of new singles. Uh, I've just, right now I'm managing my son, Levi the Rapper. He's just released his single. Oh, your boy? Yeah. Oh, he's just, no. He's just released his I didn't, single. I didn't, I didn't. I thought it was your flyer when I saw no, it. No, it's my son. Uh, this, so he's, he's just reaching 1,500 views on YouTube wow, right now. This is cool. Uh, yeah, man, I, 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 I keep pushing. I keep, I keep working. I keep uh, inspiring. We just finished uh, writing a movie with, uh, with a fellow Zimbabwean. Uh, we've pitched it to Netflix after we saw... Uh, 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 cookouts. Cook off. <laughs> Cook off. Yes. <laughs> I, I was I was with, with, with Brickle when oh, he was yes. when he was pitching it and we were laughing at him. <laughs> now I'm like, I apologize, Mr. Brickle, you were onto something. I wish <laughs> I wish I'd also been cooking off there with you guys. Uh, um, yeah. And yeah, now you know we just want to step up the game and 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 take entertainment to the next level, take Zimbabwe to the next level, and keep pushing. Say my dad, this is my dad, my guardian, I just got to go innovate. Wow, awesome. And uh, you, you mentioned the cook off there, and earlier on, you also spoke about Shasha. Um, how do you feel years later? Uh, now, a lot of this success is starting to happen with this Shasha, this uh, cook off, and then. There are also Zimbabweans that are working for Sony, from for uh, Columbia Records or MTV, for some of these big corporations, and you worked for MTV. How do you feel when you look at that? Again, it's testament to our intelligence. It's testament to, like I said earlier in the interview, to Jaganaga Tojidao. Uh, it's maybe one of the good things that came out of the, the hardships of Zimbabwe is that it forced a lot of people to uh, externalize their, their talents and hopefully they get to bring it back home one day. Uh, the diversification of cultural exchanges on a global level is a natural course, I think, that can be accredited to technology. Uh, this morning my son was playing Fortnite with a kid from the States, how they hooked up, I don't know. Yeah. And sometimes he's playing with a kid from India, how they connected, I don't know. But we live in an in a era now where it's one global family, like uh, uh, you can't stop globalization, you know, and once 5G and faster networks come into play, the world is just going to be more connected. And it's good that we have Zimbabweans in the forefront we got our young guy there in the uk with his automated car yes. we have innovators in science technology medicine we have people in the arts all the way up the ladder to hollywood we got tinashe in the billboards we we got lawyers students doctors politicians of the highest caliber uh if we could only just see and recognize ourselves at home as they say charity starts at home yeah, sure. if we could if we could just build the same infrastructure at home i think uh, zimbabwe would would uh, definitely shine but i love it i love seeing zimbabweans in in advantageous positions mm -hmm. and i support that and encourage that wow wow thank you so much uh I would have wanted to continue asking because I had a lot of questions, but I think this has been great um, and enlightening because there are a lot of things that I feel have been lost in history because we have not documented, mm -hmm. we have not been able to mm -hmm. really tell our stories. And I have a, a great present that I'm going to give you after this interview, actually, because wow. I see you're one of the guys preserving the culture, uh, something I want to give you oh, after this so interview. Much. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for introducing me to Lashan. He looked after me in oh, yeah. Cape Town. 
Passion Java. Man, connected with uh, Passion. He was supposed to be in the video. It never happened. But I got to meet him. I like the dude. Uh, yeah. Cool guy. I really. What's your take on Passion? He's fantastic, man. He's living in his his own world. I hope he's faithful to God because you know you you, you don't want to be playing spiritual games and putting your soul on the line. I hope he's genuine yeah. about his mission. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, make your money, young man. If you're going to make your cash, make your cash. Who says Who says God-loving people can't make money? Who yeah, says they right. can't have a good time? Mm. Uh, but just find balance and don't let it get to your head. Don't become egotistic. We've seen, if you're a Bible man, you know, we've had people like Joan of Arc who yeah. had these spiritual guidances and then they begin began to feel like it was their own mm. mystical powers. I don't know. Just, just tread lightly, especially when you're dealing with matters of the spirit and the soul. Yeah. Uh, I like him. I, li I think he's motivating a new generation to be outspoken, to be lavish, uh, to, to show Zimbabweans from Chi Town that you can own a, a Lamborghini, man. But get your license, homie. <laughs> get your license, Mdara. <laughs> we don't want uh, to come to the States and bail you out. <laughs> Tango about your license, Blas. Well, you have heard it. Uh, uh, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned. I'm going to ask for a very small snippet freestyle from metaphysics uh so stay tuned <laughs> hey y'all what up it's your boy metaphysics you're watching ear ground respect to my man plot now it's a science when you deal with the molecular structure of energy and you were the conductor life is your symphony notating reality on a planet that's stranded somewhere in the galaxy the complexity of the cosmos is immense i absorb my surroundings capture these events i form a quick sentence sink deep into a verse explore all corners of the universe describe as far as the words can the boundaries of expression as an african this is how i do when you we jam it this is the sound of ear to the ground. Peace.